Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm coming at you with another video where I'm tinkering with this logo. And, uh, you know, here you know, I'm, I'm making notes as to what's irritating me about this, and, uh, you know, I, I made too many borders. I made a white border and then a black border from the red to the yellow, and that made no sense. And uh, there's little, little things here and there that... I decided to take notes on on this as to, to make this as a reference image and uh, you know some of the advice that I wrote down I actually wound up actually taking uh, so all that good stuff here I'm making a graphic design uh, room or tab inside of open tunes and I decided to work on this inside of open tunes primarily because of a number of reasons I can work with vectors inside of open tunes so if I wanted to blow this image up to being the size of a billboard inside of open tunes I can it's just you know I'd have to have some really amazing you know you know resolution on the camera and all that in order to make that happen uh, but open tunes can be used as a, as a graphic design tool it's not optimized for it but you can but another reason why I, I did it is because of the color styles you change the color of your color styles and the image changes colors whereas in in Krita you change the color of a swatch and your picture remains the same Another way that uh, Open Tunes isn't really optimized for graphic design is the output settings. Like when you when you render your image and everything, the only two file formats that a graphic designer would actually want to use is uh, the JPEG and the PNG. Those are the only two that a graphic designer would want to use, but Open Tunes can be serviceable to a graphic designer. Now, you ha in order to use it as a graphic design tool, you actually have to know the ins and outs of Open Tunes. Now, I I I'm familiar with Open Tunes. There's a number of things that I do understand about it, but and and the effect schematic it would be the best friend to a graphic designer but you have to know how to use it and I don't I don't really know how to use most of the effects so I had to you know talk to snap by inside of one of the discord chats and ask him hey man how do you do this like seriously I've been this has been rack I've been racking my brain on this over and over and over again and I can't seem to figure this out and uh, only at the very tail end of this video he actually wound up responding and giving me an answer that I can understand. And when trying to pr provide a tutorial on how to work with the effect schematic, doing it through text doesn't really work. Uh, it, <laughs> it just doesn't because uh, you, you have no way of visualizing what plugs into what and where to find each thing. It, it, yeah, it makes no sense. And so uh, he wound up sending me screen captures. And that was a huge help. And so I have to say thank you to SnapEye. Oh, a little bit of news about SnapEye. Uh, that My Little Pony image, uh, or My Little Pony animation that he had that I posted inside of the uh, last Open Tunes news video, he, he's actually almost finished with it which is awesome. Um, now the link that I supplied to you guys inside of that OpenTunes news video, it no longer works because um, actually he got in contact with me later and said, hey, just talk to me next time and and uh, ask me if, if, if you can post something on the, on the OpenTunes news videos because like uh, really I just, you know, that was pr supposed to be private. Uh, so it was a private video. He took the video down, and uh, so I, I, I have to say I'm sorry to you guys, and I already apologized to him. And he says it's okay, but, you know, it kind of lost its novelty of uh, being debuted for the very first time as a finished product. And so uh, I hate being the, that particular jerk that, that does something like that, so... 
uh, sorry, Snapbot. But w obviously, we're still on good terms because he was still willing to provide uh, advice on how to work with the effect schematic. So I, I really do, I really appreciate Snapbot. He's a good guy, <laughs> a really good guy. Anyways, so. Uh, one of the, the borders, the borders to variously different objects, that's what I was struggling with. Like, if you want to have a color that's bordering around a, another object or something like that, that can be really difficult to do. Now, one technique that I did without Snap Eye was uh, I wound up uh, copying a series of lines and pasting them onto a, another column and selecting all of the lines on this new column and when you make a selection there's this little black line on the bottom right hand corner of the selection and if you click and drag on that that little tiny bold line uh, you can pump the line up and down now some people may ask well why don't you just use the pump tool for that well the pump tool works great if you're trying to pump up little localized areas and make the line non-uniform but the uh, using that that little line uh, at the bottom right hand corner of a selection will make a uniform pump it'll make the entire line pump up equally and so that's the reason why I wound up using it that way. Now here you're, you're, you're seeing me tinkering around with the effect schematic, which I do th three or four times, uh, trying to figure out different ways to create a border around an object. Uh, this, this is uh, the, the effect schematic is the best friend to a graphic designer if a graphic designer were to use Open Tunes, but you have to really understand what you're doing. In open tunes in order to do that and uh, I don't know if snap I just wound up just playing around with the effect schematic for hours and hours and hours and until he figured out variously different tricks uh, I wound up reading a lot of material instead of the uh, the open tunes manual but that didn't really help it, some like some of the information it says about effects is just like, huh, you don't say. That was worthless. Uh, so that was pretty much my perception with a, a lot of the information from, from the manual when it came to effects. So uh, that really is irritating. So uh, here you kind of see me kind of circumventing the, the stacking order of objects just by moving things on the z-axis. Uh, using the 3D camera and using the animate tool, uh, you can actually move things closer and further away from the camera, b camera by pressing and holding control and clicking and dragging on the objects and such like that. Now that is something that's really useful uh, for animating a parallax effect, but if you're using just one frame uh, for all of your columns and such like that for graphic design if you do it ever so subtly just like just a, by using a fraction of a fraction uh, you're, you're able to circumvent the stacking order and you're not really concerned about using a parallax effect you're just interested in circumventing the stacking order uh, so that you know you, you don't have to worry about oh this object is above that object this object is above this other object and you don't have to worry about matting things in and matting things out that's a pain in the butt so um, yeah at this point I'm I'm trying to actually create that weird halo that blurred halo that I got on the uh, crit file but I never was able to do that I think that by the time that I was done tinkering around with it I found a, I found out how to do it but by that point by the time that I got the effects to kind of sort of start to work the way I wanted it it's like open tunes just refused to actually render it inside of the preview mode it just completely 100% refused to render it and it bugged out in a really weird way to where open tunes was working perfectly throughout the entire time that I was using it but if I tried to close open tunes it just wouldn't close I literally had to press control alt delete in order to close open tunes 
and uh, so there came a point where I just kind of you know, just gave up and I'm just like this is this is worthless this thing I'm just gonna throw this into Krita and and make the, the just use the halo that I already got and uh, I think that works out fine. I'll I'll probably just you know outside of a video, uh, just kind of refine that little halo just a little bit better, uh, so that it looks a little bit better and such like that. Now somebody said that this doesn't this isn't really a logo, and you know the, everyone's got an opinion and about something, and uh, I you know graphic designers can can use a highly technical technique in order to uh, to create a, a logo and in the end they wind up with this uh, really modern art sort of um, object that doesn't even really resemble the thing that they they say it is like oh yeah this object is a dragon but it doesn't really look like a dragon to, to me I, I just I don't see uh, I don't, I don't see the appeal in that. I, now, if I were to be working with a client and doing graphic design work for the, a client, then yeah, you know, that's exactly what I would do. Uh, I would, I would do whatever they wanted me to do, even if it's something that I don't find appealing. But this is my logo, and uh, since, I, since I don't have. Since I'm not using a bunch of uniform techniques and using a bunch of rulers and stuff like that, it does not mean that, therefore, this is not a logo. Um, you know, Johnny Walker, it's an alcoholic beverage and stuff like that. Uh, their logo is an illustration. It's it's an outright illustration. There's nothing highly technical. There was no millions and millions of rulers used in order to create it, although a, a lot of technical... Uh, things were used and highly uh, uh, talented people worked on it uh, it it wasn't like formulaically done and stuff like that and yet the Johnny Walker logo is a logo um, and all that now I'm not criticizing anyone who's who, who's made that statement or anything like that but Okay, at this point, uh, the video is playing at one time speed, basically normal play speed. Just watch really carefully. This is how you apply a, uh, <clears throat> a border or outline around an object using the effect schematic. Now, there are positives and negatives to using this uh, this way, to, to creating borders and such like that. Right here, this is regular time speed here, right here, starting just a few seconds ago. Uh, the the benefit is that you're you're not overcomplicating your columns on your timeline. Okay, so that's the benefit of using the effect schematic to make an outline. However, the edit mode is different from the preview mode. So you're not going to be able to see the borders that you've created, the outlines that you've created. You're not going to be able to see those when you're in edit mode. So, you know, there's there's weird behavior in set of open tunes where what you see when you're editing an object is different than how it's going to render. Um, that is another thing that I think that a graphic designer might find annoying if they were to use Open Tunes as a, a graphics design tool. Uh, now, if if there were enough people willing to make you know bounties to optimize Open Tunes for uh, being a graphic a graphic design tool, then you know I I really do think Open Tunes is pretty dang close to that point to being able to satisfy that that user group that might be interested in using open tunes that way um, it's just that you know they'd have to have a different type of layers panel uh, that you know isn't really necessarily oriented around having millions of frames on the screen all at once and uh, a bunch of other things like that uh, output settings different 
different stuff like that. But uh, Open Tunes has a lot to offer, and it's almost there. Uh, it, it's tablet friendly, even. Inkscape is the Adobe Illustrator alternative, and Inkscape sucks if you're trying to use a tablet, like a graphics tablet, and draw on the screen. No, no, no. OpenTunes is tablet friendly, and so it has some benefits that Inkscape doesn't have. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, please like, share, and subscribe. Anyways, there's a lot of work that goes into these videos. And if you'd like to take a look at any of the other videos that I've made, feel free to click on the videos that are appearing on the screen right now. Have a good one.